Welcome to this episode of 15 Minutes to Merge. I'm here with a very special guest, John. John, welcome. Hi, April. How's it going? Good. I am glad to work with you again. We've worked together in the past in different areas and realms of the world. Um, go ahead and tell everyone who you are and what it is you do. Yeah. So um, I'm John Stallo. I'm a product manager in the developer division. Uh, I work out of Perth, Australia, uh, where it's sunny most of the time. Um, and I'm really excited to talk about a new service uh, that we have in public preview, just launched not only no, not, not even a month ago. Um, and uh, it's called Microsoft Playwright Testing. Awesome. So yeah, we're going to cover off the introduction of what is Playwright Testing and what the, oh, sorry, what is Microsoft Playwright Testing? Because that's different from what Playwright is. So why don't you kick it off and tell us what is Playwright and then tell us what differentiates the new Microsoft Play, Playwright Testing service. Yeah, um, that's a great question. So Playwright is a very popular open source testing framework uh, for modern web apps. Um, and so it enables you to write scripts that basically automate your web app in the browser. So you, know, you can write scripts to navigate to a page, fill in a form, click on the button. Um, and you can write these tests in you know, TypeScript, C Sharp, Java, Python. And the benefit of having these automated tests is that you can just run them over and over again. You don't have to manually test uh, your, uh, your web app anytime that you change your application code. And so you can run these collection of tests on your machine. You can run them within the pull request. You could run them on, on the nightly build. And at the end of the day, um, automated tests are really essential to be able to maintain high feature velocity. And really having confidence that your team can collectively, uh, as they're making changes to uh, your web app, that they're not breaking things. Um, and that allows you to be able to you know, deliver features um, with high velocity and uh, good quality. So, so that's Playwright, mm -hmm. and it's open source, it's free, will continue to be free. Um, and what I'm introducing today is a new managed service, which we call Microsoft Playwright Testing. Um, and that extends Playwright with cloud capabilities. Awesome, because I think, you know, while Playwright Testing is a very important tool, and we need to deliver faster, more efficiently, and test everything. Um, seeing this as a managed service has a lot of benefits to us. Yeah, so um, think about a team of developers that are motivated to quickly deploy new features with the highest possible quality. And perhaps they have hundreds, if not thousands, of playwright tests that they run on different browsers that they support. Um, but waiting for those test results takes a long time let's say 30 minutes, an hour. And we know of some teams and some cases where it could be actually multiple hours. Um, and so the team is already under pressure, right, to, to move fast. And so it becomes almost like a natural consequence to run those tests maybe less frequently um, or, or maybe just to skip them. I and that, that leads well, to issues potentially. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> Back, back, right? to issues. It, or my machines crash. I'm like, yeah, it totally worked. It totally worked. And we just right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So we, we all know, you know, we've all been there where you know we run less tests or running less frequently, and that just leads to finding issues, you know, much later. It, finding issues later makes it more difficult to troubleshoot, and that just ends up really messing up the, the team's productivity. And so that's where Microsoft Playwright testing comes in. Um, which it can significantly reduce the wait time for test results. And it also helps you test on more operating system browser combinations as well. Awesome. I'd love to show you a demo. Yeah, please do. Let's see it. Okay, so um, here I've got VS Code um, open. I already have some Playwright tests um, open. And uh, this one's written in uh, TypeScript. And uh, you can see what this test does. It's very simple, but obviously you can have you know, more, uh, more interesting uh, tests. But this one you know, opens uh, a page, and then it waits for that page to load. It goes and finds a particular link called Getting Started, and then it clicks on that link, which then opens up another page. Playwright waits for that page to actually have loaded, and then it actually checks that it has you know, a particular URL. Um, and, and so this actually makes uh, Playwright very reliable. You don't have to second guess when a page is loaded, when a certain UI element is actually being displayed or not. Those built-in awaits 
um, are really what makes Playwright very reliable. Now, this is Playwright open source, what I'm showing here. And the way that you kick off uh, Playwright tests is uh, you can do this on the command line, npx Playwright test. I'm hitting enter here. And you can see um, I'm cheating a little bit. My, my code here, I just have one test. And I'm simulating a much larger test suite. Mm -hmm. You can see I'm actually I've got a for loop here. So there's a couple of things that we already notice here. Um, first off, you know, each of these test iterations only takes, well, less than a second. And if you think about it, like it's loading several pages, it's you know, waiting for some UI elements, it's clicking on them, um, it has some asserts, it, like all of that stuff, very quick to be able to just run through, run through each iteration of the test um, Playwright is very quick. The other thing that you can uh, notice here is it's actually running two workers. And so Playwright already has built-in parallel tests okay. uh, right, right there and then. And because I have enough cores on my machine, it's figured out it has enough uh, resources to be able to run two parallel tests um, or two parallel workers. And so what that means is... As we go through, you, know, you can see that it's cycling through and you've got two tests running at, at each time. Two workers, which are really lightweight processes, they're being spun up by Playwright, and they each are going to be running about half of these 1,000 tests each. Mm -hmm. And each of these workers is connecting to a browser instance, in this case, Chromium, on the same machine. And that's the way that you know, it's... It's, it's running these tests in parallel. Now, if I have a thousand tests, if I have uh, more browser combinations like WebKit and Firefox, um, maybe iPhone, you know, other types of um, uh, uh, configurations of my browser, you can easily see how that just completely expands uh, the number of tests that I need to get through. Yeah. Um, and so one of the things that you could maybe think is, you know, what if I just say, you know, tell Playwright to run with more workers? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to control C just to stop everything. And let's say, let's go back to uh, the command that I had before. And on the command line, I can specify more workers. So let's say like, I really want to like, just, I, I'm, I'm very impatient. I don't want to wait for the, these test results it's taking too long. I'm going to bump that up to 20 workers. So Playwright very faithfully now spins up 20 workers now all in parallel. And it also is going to spin up 20 instances of the Chromium browser. And even though you can see that it's actually doing that, each of these tests is actually taking a lot longer. Right. You know, before it was taking you know, just a couple of hundred milliseconds. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, certainly you know, closer to 10 seconds. And my machine is really, really straining at this time. So it's kind of getting through these tests. Even though I'm running you know, more parallel workers, it's not really running uh, faster in terms of being able to complete everything. And not only that, if I just keep this running, I'm going to start running into resource contention. And then that starts you know, making uh, my test more flaky and so forth. So not a good strategy. Okay, so at this point, to try and make things go faster and, and achieve more parallelization, uh, there's a few things that you could do. One would be to just throw more resources at it, and that way you would be able to run more browser instances on your machine. And remember, uh, when I talk about a machine, it could be your dev workstation, or it could actually be your CI agent as well. Um, another method that uh, people also use is just to basically break up, you know, all of your tests into smaller chunks and then basically uh, run each of those chunks on different machines. Um, it's used today. It's a little bit more um, involved to be able to get that running, but that is, you know, another approach. Or now a, another option is to be able to use Microsoft Playwright testing service which just really makes a lot of this a breeze. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to control C again uh, because my machine is being hammered at this point. Um, and let me just show you how easy it is to be able to just get started with Microsoft Playwright testing. Okay. And then we'll rerun these tests. 
So just to get started, you can type in playwright.microsoft.com into uh, your browser and it takes you to the sign-in page. Uh, you need an Azure account to be able to sign in. And then after clicking sign in, just sign in with your Azure uh, credentials and then you'll be on your way. It will take you in your first time, it, you'll have some guided steps that you can take to be able to um, basically configure your existing project to be able to run it with uh, the Playwright service. So here's a few steps that, uh, that you'll need to take. Um, there's some uh, service configuration uh, that uh, you add to your project. And then there's an access token, which this is really just to be able to, you know, authenticate uh, your account with uh, the, the service. And so, you know, there's a, um, an environment variable that you would be able to set there. There's another uh, region endpoint environment variable that you would uh, set and that just points uh, your machine to uh, the service. And then you're off being able to run a command. So let me do some of this. In the interest of time, I've already gone ahead and added that uh, Playwright service configuration. So let's just pop over uh, to see what that looks like. And it really is just about 30 lines of code. Um, the first thing that to call out is it extends your existing Playwright configuration. Now, Playwright configuration is where you say things like, I want to be able to run uh, my tests on these browsers. I want to be able to time out. Um, I want to collect this kind of diagnostics information if the test fails. And so you build on all of that existing configuration, even when you use it with uh, the service. And then just a few more things to call out here. Um, for example, uh, you know, that has things like you know, the access uh, token that you set. Um, or you're able to now uh, specify, well, which operating system do you want to uh, use? And this would be the operating system of the browser that's in the cloud. So today you can specify Linux or Windows. And then something really cool, which is really just a, a, you know, a one-liner here, is if you have, let's say, you're developing a, an app on your local machine and you're running that in localhost, let's say, you can have those managed browsers in the cloud actually talk back to your machine, uh, to your app that's running on your local host, um, whether that's your developer workstation or in your CI agent, that's all just possible through this configuration. Awesome. Okay, so I've added that configuration. Um, I also grabbed those uh, uh, environment variables, if you remember the mm -hmm. token and the endpoint URL, and I put them inside a .env file. Um, and so that's just gonna pick them up as environment variables. And now what I'm going to do, if you remember, just bring it back up my, my history, I ran a Playwright with 20 workers before, um, and you could see that my machine just started to really slow down. Now, let's bump that up to double that, 40. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell Playwright, use the service configuration uh, that, that I added to my project, and now I'm going to hit enter and let's see what happens. So now it's going to run 1,000 tests. Playwright is going to spin up 40 lightweight, lightweight processes on my machine. And each of those workers is now going to be connecting to tw uh, 40 browsers um, in the cloud. And you can see here, um, it's just running through those uh, tests much, much faster. Yeah, absolutely. And there you go, a thousand tests in about half a minute. Um, and so what does this enable you to do? Um, enable some really interesting scenarios. Um, so one common pattern that exists today is um, maybe you have a full test suite that runs in an integration environment, right? That runs through all of your tests and browser combinations, um, but it runs once every few days once a week maybe, right? And finding issues there when a test fails, that's just a lot harder to be able to debug. If tests now run instead of, you know, 40 minutes, instead of an hour, they now take 10 minutes, five minutes, 
you can now run much more tests in, say, a pull request. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you could run a lot of those tests even before you commit your code on your developer machine. So it really opens up um, being able to run more tests against you know, more operating system and, and browser combinations uh, just because you're able to get through your test results a lot faster um, and therefore giving your team the confidence that they need to be able to you know, ship your features uh, with high quality and, uh, and on time. Awesome. No, I like this. This is cool. This is good improvement. So I want to know, though, like I, I use CI CD quite a bit. How do we integrate this into a GitHub Actions workflow? That's a really good question. Um, and it's, 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 um, it's something that I, I really like to show because um, a lot of what you learn about Playwright um, and how you run it on, say, your dev machine as you use it while you, you code up, a lot of those concepts just carry over to uh, CI CD. Mm -hmm. And the same thing is also with the service. So let me just show you um, a some. I'm showing here a, a GitHub workflow, okay. uh, and uh, this GitHub workflow you know, gets triggered on every uh, code push or pull request. These are kind of like just standard um, uh, you know, elements here, um, and the way that you would you know, build your your app, um, and then the way that you would spin up playwright tests. Um, would still remain similar if now you're using it with the service, except, and this is where line 33, if you can see it here, instead of running with, you know, the default, you know, playwright.config.ts, now I'm running with the service configuration that you saw me before yep. uh, use. And so it just really is the same way. Now, remember those uh, uh, environment variables that I had to set? So here I'm using best practices of just using some secrets um, in GitHub to be able to pull those. Uh, uh, secrets and, and, and set up those environment variables. But the way that I run uh, uh, my, my Playwright test suite is exactly the same. Except now, obviously, I get the benefit of uh, much faster uh, test results. Awesome. And I love that you hit your secrets. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. And it looks like you've also created a report as well that you can pull and retain it for 10 days so you know exactly what happened. You can pull that report and trace back any issues. That's right. Yeah. So actually, um, you're just reminding me um, of something that, that I would like to show. Um, this is uh, a playwright.microsoft.com. Um, it's, a, it's a portal that we've built um, really specifically for uh, using the, the Playwright service. Um, once you're ready to be able to, when you've, you've actually run a few uh, tests, you can switch over to what we call the activity log. Mm -hmm. um, and at this point, it's very basic information. Every time I run uh, a, a set of tests, you can see that it, it basically adds you know, a bit more in the, um, in the entry log here. But some, some information that's uh, displayed right here is... Um, on the right-hand side here, and this is really just to help you experiment with what is the right co service configuration for you to be able to maximize uh, your your performance. And so there's just three things that I'd like to call out here. One um, is you know, this would be a test run, and what the first set of numbers shows is this is how long your actual test suite took to finish. Then it shows this is how many workers you ran with. Mm -hmm. And then this is the actual total times across all of those parallel browsers combined together. And that actually ends up being your billable minutes. All right. This is a paid for service, um, that, uh, that, that Microsoft Playwright testing is. And so with that, it, it kind of gives you some, some, some basic information to be able to uh, experiment, you know, is running with 10 workers, 20 workers, up to 50 workers, which is the current maximum uh, for public preview uh, that you can run with. And it really depends on your application, depends on your environment, uh, where you're running it from, uh, that, you'll, that, that you will need to really tweak those numbers uh, to, to land you know, in a place that's right for your scenarios.
But I think that's great because those are great metrics we can work to. How long it took to run our test? How long does it take a, an engineer or developer to run those tests and how we can improve upon it? Because we always look at that rate of improvement, the rate of change as an engineer. So that's perfect. John, this is awesome. Great to see the Great to see the service out there and running. Great to see how we can integrate it to our CICD pipeline. So whether you're using GitHub Actions or another deployment tool, um, we get some great metrics off of it, deploy it, automate it. So John, thank you so much for coming on to 15 Minutes to Merge. And you know we pretty much merged our code in 15 minutes and did our testing. That's pretty good. Sweet. Well, thank you so much, April. All right, John. Thank you for joining us and see you all next time.